Order emerges when organisms interact with each other to create new properties by bringing themselves into association. Protons, neutrons, and electrons come together to form atoms. Atoms come together to form molecules. Molecules interact with each other to form cells. Single cells join together to form multicellular colonies. Some cells do the digestion. Others become responsible for movement. And working together, they form tissues. And tissues combine to evolve into multicellular organisms like a full-fledged nervous system. And this is all being done through the behavior of individual cells. As individuals, moving is one living organism. So you have to ask yourself, what is a living organism? A living organism is a system of intercommunication of extreme complexity. Try to define what you are. And when you go into it, you suddenly realize that when you take off your skin and look underneath, you're a complex system of tubes and fibers beautifully patterned. And when you look at this under a microscope, all these crazy little creatures running around inside of us don't look like people, but they would seem like people if you got used to them, or if you got to know them. Because inside of us, they're having all their problems, they've got all sorts of fights going on, collaborations, conspiracies, and so on. But if they weren't doing that, we wouldn't be healthy. If the various corpuscles and cells in our bloodstream weren't fighting each other, we would drop dead. And that's why battles at one level of being can bring overall peace and health at another level. People are always going to have problems. People are always going to bump heads, regardless of what type of system we live under. But it's up to us to understand this and to turn these bumps into the learning process. Take any highly organized system of life, for example. Take the way a garden exists. It's full of, in a sense, competitive species, snails and thrushes and various insects in opposition to each other. And because their fights keep going on, the life of the garden as a whole is maintained. But you can't say the snails in this garden shouldn't be allowed because you want the lettuces to thrive. Because if there aren't any snails, the birds won't come around. Because the birds like the snails. And the birds do all kinds of things for your garden, like supplying it with manure and so on. So the price of having birds is snails that eat your lettuces. In the same way, people are all different. Yet at the same time, people are all interrelated and indispensable to each other, like the organs in our body. For example, you can argue that the stomach is fundamental, eating is the big thing, and therefore we grew brains as extensions of the stomach to get it more food, to say the brain is the servant of the stomach. But you can argue equally that the brain is primary, and that it has all these thinking games to play, and it needs a stomach as an appendage to supply it with energy. Or you can argue that the sex organs are primary, and they need the brain and the stomach to keep the ecstasy going to continue reproducing. But then the brain and the stomach can equally argue that they wouldn't find it worthwhile unless they had the sex organ appendage to give them solace. The truth of the matter is that nobody comes first. Nobody pushes the other around. You don't find brains without stomachs and sex organs. They all go together. And this is the fallacy of empire, rulers, masters, and leaders. No one's primary. Men should not rule over other men. People should be working together the same way that all the organs of your physical body move together. All the cells of your brain cooperate. You don't have to force them into association. You don't have to make your brain cells cooperate. You don't have to tell them to. You don't have to arrange a treaty of some kind. They just do so. And these networks of neurons create structured thoughts beyond what any individual neuron could possibly direct or conduct or orchestrate. Let's look at the birds. You notice how when birds suddenly turn in the air, they turn as if they were all one bird. But when they land on the sand, they become individuals running around independently. Although these birds control themselves, there exists a set of rules from within for the interaction with each other and with the environment. It's the same thing with schools of fish. We find a complex order within fish populations. They all cooperate without a leader. There's no single brain at the top giving orders down. There's no conductor, there's no director, there's no master controlling the functions of these fish. They're self-organized. So, order does not require central coordination. People can spontaneously organize themselves to create a type of self-organization structure that no individual can intend, comprehend, or perceive, much less coordinate. And this is done by free association resulting in spontaneous arrangements, understanding, and finding simplicity in complexity. That's order.